Hey everyone, welcome to another episode from Ampro Engineering. I love WPL products. I, I have for many years. I've had my C, uh, I think it's the C24, for probably about five or six years now. And we have something new here. I don't know what it is. Okay, it's upside down. Obviously, we have a Toyota crew cab. And it looks pretty good. So with the Photoshop right here, that's kind of weird. This is the C64-1. Some information down here if you want to pause and take a look at this. The thing we haven't covered in this uh, on this channel before, pretty nicely packaged. I think this could take a pretty serious hit in shipping without any issues. Okay, here is the pickup, it looks like. All right, cool. So that's out there, nothing else in here. Interesting, so in terms of chassis, this appears to be just like the C54. Some adjustable coilovers on this, which is really nice to see. Again, the C54 is like that as well. As we can see here, we have the new C64, and here we've got the old D version. Same body, I think 100%. Bumpers appear to be identical as well. Yeah, totally identical. Now, as you recall the video for this vehicle here, while I found the body to be an outstanding mold, I found the appearance of an off-road vehicle on the chassis of an on-road vehicle was a little confusing. Looking straight over here, normally I wouldn't be so into something with this kind of height but i have to say this looks pretty pretty darn awesome it seems like the back i feel like the suspension is actually really really soft tires are stiff tires are too stiff these are the kit tires and yeah they're, they're yeah too hard this is the c54-1 and while the chassis are rather i think rather similar same gearboxes this one here appears to have a, some sort of a shield, and I don't know what that is there to the right. Um, it's hard to tell, but this motor here is significantly smaller than the motor in this vehicle here. That's because I did replace this with a higher power version. I found this to be underpowered, but being realistic for the target demographic, if we were gonna give if you were going to give one of these to a kid, you would want something a bit more on the underpowered side because that's going to significantly reduce damage that could possibly happen to this vehicle. So that's probably why they went that path. However, this vehicle here has an axle mounted servo. Usually I'm not a fan of this because I'm more in line with the kind of scale appearance of this and the axle mounted servo is a little bit weird to me, but to be honest, in terms of its operation, this is gonna, this is gonna be great. You know, you're not gonna have any bump steer and a lot of WPLs, oh boy, oh boy. Cranking the wheel one way or the other, it's possible that if you don't have the steering set up correctly, as you max it out, it'll actually pull pull down the suspension. It's kind of weird. So it's, this is gonna be eliminated on this vehicle. Oh, oh wow, cool. So here is where the battery is going to reside. That is definitely very different than the D, uh, the D series version of this truck. That's kind of cool. That's really cool back there. All right, let's see here, what else do we have? Let's power it up. I'm assuming we're gonna have the standard WPL radio. Yes, we are. I love these radios. Simple and utterly reliable. This is gonna take two triple, uh, pardon me, two AA batteries. You've got a screw here to prevent the batteries from falling out if, it's just, if the uh, radio is dropped. Okay, leave this screw up for now. We'll plug the battery in. These have a newer style WPL four pin battery. Uh, I complained about it at first a lot because they were different from the old the, the old style WPLs, but now all the ones I have 
have this, so I can't complain much anymore now. It's kind of cool that the battery is actually retained before you drop the lid on top. Okay, is that going to work? Nicely done. All right, so we'll power the radio on first. Power the truck on, which is right here. The flashing headlights means it hasn't bound yet, so turn that and you're good to go. Servo sounds great. The way that these radios work, I'm going to try and show you here. If you crank it all the way, you want more steering, press this button. Oh, okay, so this is actually defaulting to the opposite. This is actually going to reduce steering. Um, for those of you wondering why this is the case, this is the same radio that they use on the D-Series drift vehicles. On those, they're usually set up so that they're less steering. You press this and it increases. But it makes more sense that on an off-road vehicle, it's reversed. Or that you'd simply just want to have the uh, increased steering. So the throttle rate. Full speed, press the throttle button. Okay, so it seems like that is disabled now. This is, again, fine on this application. We're going to press and hold the steering button. That kills the lights. In terms of lighting, although this comes with headlights, there's a bucket, there's a hole for the turn signals, the parking light, and two here at the rear. Now, there are decals. You've got a whole bunch of decals. You've got the roll bar lights up here. Uh, again, the decals are right there. You're going to have your mirrors, your snorkels, your door handles, all packaged in here, as well as your charger. I don't really like these chargers as much as their old ones, but um, I guess I can't complain. They work fine. So it does look like it steers probably more than it should. Yeah. When you max the steering out, it seems like... Yeah, right about there. I mean, it's still steering. So here's the deal. This is the base model. Is it? I th yeah, it is. Uh, this is the base style drive cup in here, and it's basically a shaft with two pins. Yeah, it's hard to see, but it is in there, and that goes into a larger plastic cup. They sell a really nice, much smaller, much more refined universal drive, which will potentially not allow that to uh, be as noticeable here. For those of you who are perhaps new to WPL vehicles, the aftermarket on these is insane. The stuff that you can do to them is pretty wild. But kind of pointing back to the C54 over here, this vehicle, other than the motor, has had nothing done. Original radio, original drive shafts even. And this is one of these things that I would always complain about in WPLs, that drive shafts last 15 seconds. This truck has been driven a tremendous amount. I would say close to maybe 50 or so packs. My son and I take this out a lot. This one and um, the FJ go out all the time. So effectively, we've got a identical chassis with an improved steering I wonder if this one here has, yeah, you can actually see it here. It has the exact same steering. It doesn't have that issue because this is pretty much the max it will steer. Whereas this vehicle here will go significantly more. So perhaps it would be best to limit the steering radius and that'll eliminate that, uh, that binding until, for example, you do um, modify these axles. My plan now is to take this thing for a drive, and I think I'll bring this with. We are going to try a drag race to see which car's faster. Okay, when I tell you, just floor it. Okay, ready, set, go. Oh, it's faster. All right. So you can see that the new one is definitely out accelerating. All right, so the drive shaft fell off. Uh, my son was doing some pretty good off-roading. 
I also noticed that the link right there isn't hooked up, but I don't know if that just happened or one of these is related. Um, what I did notice is that the drive shaft didn't have a screw. Neither does that one, but it's not, I don't know. Well, we're gonna have to investigate. There's a lot we need to unpack here. First things first, different studio, having some work done on the house, a lot of work done on the house, so I'm not there. Okay, moving on. How did I fix the axles? Pretty simple. Now again, this is an early production unit specifically designed for testing. So I don't know if they had anticipated a press fit would have been fine here, but the fact of the matter is it wasn't. So I tried two things. First things first, on the rear, okay. I just shoved a 2.5 millimeter screw in there, which is a standard 
WPL part. Problem solved. The problem is at the front, you can see that the motor is right there taking up space. Therefore, a screw whose head is protruding a significant amount like in the rear isn't gonna work. So what I did is I used a 2.5 millimeter drill bit to open the hole up a bit. Then I used an M3 tap, just tapped it, and I just very, I think, lightly installed this M3 set screw and it's been fine. I ran about two packs through this, which isn't usually all I would do. Normally I would run the wheels off of these things, but the problem is a couple things. First off, early cars are having issues here with this uh, ball joint. Let's see if I can pop it off. Eh, this is not too bad. I have heard some of the testers complaining about some of the fitment. Um, that has been addressed already by the factory. And secondly, the other issue, which you may have seen a couple of times in the last bit of the driving video, is the current cutoff is very, very low on this. What that means is under load, if a lot of power is applied to the motor, but the wheels aren't spinning, this can potentially burn out the electronics. So the company put in a, a, fail, -safe, a fail safe cutoff, which will just you know cut power to the motor. It's way too low. So the car tends to cut out on um, more intense running, which is why I didn't run it on any you know rock crawling and all that. And that's a kind of a cop out because the other issue was I just, I've been so busy, I haven't had the ability to do that. Now, different electronics will be available on the production units versus this one here. So there we have the, the main issues taken care of. Again, at the front here, I do not like how, you know, it kind of like, it kind of gets caught in here. I understand the benefits of the axle mounted servo, but it should have been more thought out. They, they're basically using a lot of the off the shelf parts to build this vehicle in conjunction with a lot of new parts that they're coming out with. So I can understand why it's been done. A number of reviewers have fixed this issue. I have not again had a chance to do that, but apparently it's as simple as just kind of trimming the, uh, the interface there and that'll solve the problem. So I would check out a few more videos that do address that and take care of that. Overall, because this is ex nearly exactly like the, the Land Cruiser that I showed earlier, I'm you know pretty confident that this vehicle is going to be rock solid. This body is a bit heavier, it's a bit bigger, but overall it actually has a more realistic ride to it. You guys saw the video and that's typically shot in 60 frames per second and then played back at 50% speed like a lot of people do. And I really think that gives a fantastic scale appearance. So I have to admit that I'm very, very happy with this car, but will you be? Well, I think if you're a potential beginner, this is an out of the box, ready to go solution that is going to be very, very acceptable. If you are that, kind of pro level enthusiast. This is, I don't know, I, I would never recommend an RTR for anybody of that caliber because typically, you know, you're not gonna run everything plastic. But here's the deal with the WPL. Number one, they're relatively small. However, they're capable outdoors on a lot of 1 10th scale terrain, which is great. Secondly, everything is replaceable, not just with WPL parts, but with a, a multitude of aftermarket components. So these are not throwaway vehicles between completely metal variations, tons of tire options, just WPL's own body options. These are wonderful for the hardcore driver too that needs something a bit smaller. Perhaps you're traveling, perhaps you're looking at something that's a bit less expensive, but still vastly customizable. This could be an option for you. My friends, thank you all so much for watching. My apologies on the setup that I have right now. It's a, uh, you know, you gotta do what you gotta do. Um, this video was supposed to probably be out be six months ago. So it's uh, it's been a little crazy. Thank you all so much for watching and we'll see you soon.